one of the most famous purchases of land in history dates all the way back to the times of the Torah. In uh, Parshas Chai Sarah, there's a, a lengthy discussion about Avraham buying a piece of land from Bnei Chet, specifically from Ephron. And uh, the reason he bought this piece of land was in order to bury his wife Sarah. It's a famous discussion, it's a famous idea we know in Hebron. For example, uh, this past week was the, uh, the Parshish Chai Sarah, and there was over 30,000 people spending Shabbat over there, because that's, of course, where all of the Avot are uh, buried, and all of the Imahot, except for Rachel. And it's a very special place for the Jewish people over the millennia to, to go and to Davin. This even dates back to the times of the Torah when Pinchas went to Hebron to Davin by the Kivrei Avot, uh, where, the, where our forefathers were buried, for special help, for uh, divine assistance, so to speak, because he was in a tough situation with the spies, and we know when they came back, they failed. So he davened over there. You know, generally, when we go to a special holy place where righteous people are buried, especially the Avot, so we, we really mainly davening in the merit of the righteous people that are there. There's also an added idea that you can actually ask the tzaddikim, the righteous people buried there, to daven for you. And in this case, Pinchas actually asks, it says, Avosai bikshu rachnum alai, fathers, Avram Yitzchak Yaakov is speaking to, please, you know, ask Hashem that for mercy, for my sake. So we see there even asking the Avot to, to be mevakesh rachmem for, for him, and that is one of the ways we can go to the Kivrei Sadikim and do the same thing, ask for them to daven for us, but mainly the focus is that we daven there in the merit of the Sadikim. Now, getting back to our, our piece of land that, that Avraham purchased, we know he paid a lot of money for it. Now, what we want to appreciate and understand is at the very end of the, the whole section in the Chumash, the Pasha, talking about this purchase. So the Pasuk reads, um, Literally, Vayakom means, and the, the field and the cave rose up when Avraham bought it. Now, in a literal sense, it uh, didn't mean it rose. Rashi explains one of the Pshatim, obviously, is that uh, it's transferred from being owned by Ephron to being owned by Avraham. That's the, the, the general idea. But uh, Chazal understands something deeper, and Rashi points it out over here. By Yakom, when the field gets up, so to speak, it rises in stature. And Rashi comments that it, it went from being the possession of a hediot, of a normal, regular person, to being owned by Avraham, who was compared to like a king in his time and place, a holy, righteous melech, a king. Now, to take this idea even deeper, I would like to point out more from a mystical, spiritual perspective, we have to understand what is the nature of the physical world and how does it change when a righteous person is involved. You know, the, the nation of Israel, are, we're righteous and we're meant to sanctify ourselves and the world through our actions. And Avraham is, a, is an example of it in the Torah here. When he buys the land, it becomes the possession of Avraham. So in a deeper sense, because Avraham is holy and his life is dedicated to holy service, the land rises from being mundane to being holy. And that's essentially what the entire Jewish people do when they take over Israel. It switches over from being a mundane land to being a holy land. And with that, we can appreciate the, the sort of the remez, what, what the language of Rashi alludes to, is that it belonged to a hediot, and it became the owner of a king, the, you know, a king takes over. So we know that God is called the king of the world, Malko Shel Olam. And the idea of a head yot is someone ordinary. So from a spiritual sense, it means like this. The land had an ordinary status. When Avram took it over and sanctified it and used it to become a burial place for, for the Avot, it became part of the holy land that we speak about. And so it went up from Chol to Kodesh. With this idea, we can appreciate the whole idea of the Jewish role in the world right now. Physically speaking, we've been given a piece of land, Israel, but spiritually speaking, the concept of sanctifying the world stretches beyond. There is a concept of holiness that is um, dormant in, in all of the world, and that is one of the reasons why it's explained by Chazal that the Jews were spread out around the world, is to you know, elevate the, all of the potential holiness that is in all of the different nations, all of the different places that the Jewish people go and travel. So wherever you might be, you go to any place when you get involved and, and do your mundane actions. So if you are able to sanctify those actions, then you're able to raise them up to Kedusha. And that's the message here in the idea of Avram with his dealings with Ephron. By him purchasing the land and using it as a burial place for the Avot, so we, we, we point out how it belonged to Ephron, and when it belonged to Ephron, it was just a regular 
piece of land, and by becoming Avraham's and being used for Avraham, it became holy. And that's the same thing that we do when, even if you're in America or, or France or anywhere you are, by using the places that you are for mitzvot, for holiness, we transform and bring out the potential holiness that sits within spiritually in those places. Uh, this connects very well to a famous idea from Chazal that the synagogues, the Batei Knesiot, the, the, basically the holy places that we build in, in Chutz La'aretz outside of Israel, so when Mashiach comes and will merit the ultimate Geulah, it says that those very synagogues that we built, the bricks and the wood, whatever that those buildings are built out of, they are holy in essence, and they actually are going to come to Israel. That's what the Chazal go as far as to say, that the physical buildings that are holy that we've turned into Batei Knesiot, synagogues and study halls in the, the, the diaspora, those places are going to be here too in Israel in the Holy Land because we've made them holy. And that's the purpose of the Jewish life, to sanctify himself and the world around him. And may we merit the culmination of all of this work, when Mashiach comes. Yeah.